Hello and welcome to this May edition of the Open Security Summit. We have got Avis here with a road to threat modeling. Over to you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for attending this session. Um, as you know, from last Open Security Summit, we had a session about security on autonomous systems. And that's where we spoke generally about um, you know, a security on autonomous system, where we are, security on drones, security on what are the possible cyber uh, cyber attacks on on some some autonomous system. And uh, at the end, uh, with my, I was talking to Dennis and my friend Andre Ferreira. So we're saying that um, we should do an, a threat model on a um, a car. Um, uh, a car. So uh, we went and we did a lot of digging and researching. And um, um, uh, Andre, he had a thesis based on um, on um, security on uh, automated cars, um, self-driven cars. And then we discovered like it, we had a lot of obstacles, and one of them is a lack of publishing uh, published stuff uh, on the internet. Uh, we couldn't find like some data flow diagrams. It was really hard to do so. So uh, that's why we um, so that uh, and it was really hard to to narrow to narrow it down to a specific component. So what we want to do is to go and talk about vanity security, which I will explain what it is, and then hopefully on the next session we'll be able to do a specific uh, threat model um, on a specific thing. Because as you say, like you know, if you do want to do a threat model on a product, you can't do that. You start, you know, you have a big product, so you're gonna you're gonna end up with thousands, hundreds, I don't know, of of threat models. Um, for the people who don't know me, so my name is Abbas Haida. I am a cybersecurity ent enthusiast. I am a SOC manager uh, for Ant Group International. I have uh, some technical background and um, I like threat modeling and graph visualization. And if you want to guess who inspired me, um, the, the guy is not on the call now, but no, the Dennis is on the call. So that's, he, he, he inspired me to into like threat modeling and graph um, visualization. Uh, I have a special passion to security on autonomous system. Uh, basically um, anything like drones, uh, I was working on a big project, uh, drone project, security on drones uh, or um, vehicles and stuff like that. And I've beaten diabetes last year, which is I'm really proud of. So um, I just want to start with like, I just want to introduce what are, uh, sorry for the spelling mistake there. So what are autonomous vehicles? Uh, and what are the good things, bad things quickly. So um, autonomous vehicles are self-driven vehicles that are, are expected to replace human in maneuvering cars. So they will be driving cars. I'm not sure if you heard now that um, self-driven cars in the UK, as long as, long as they're doing, as an example, 37 miles per hour or less, uh, you can read a book, you can, uh, you can, you know, be on the internet, watching YouTube, or whatever you can do, whatever you want to do. Um, they are meant to improve road safety by reducing the amount of accidents caused by human error. So, as you know, uh, I don't know the exact percentage, but most of the accidents are, you know, caused by human errors. Like probably over ninety percent are caused by more than that by human errors by people who are drunk uh, or by people who had, let's say, as an example, a medical condition on a road. Um, and 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 auto, uh, auto, auto, automated, uh, autonomous, sorry. <laughs> and th these self-driven -driv vehicles will be able to replace, to, to eliminate that threat. So uh, to eliminate that threat, because you know that they have, they are uh, they are programmed to uh, to work <coughs> on on their own, and um, uh, they are not human. So um, so which is which is kind of good. Uh, they have the intelligence of being capable of sensing, understanding, and making decisions in the real world, as we said. So, if you, as, as you know now, that you know, self-driven cars, they can take a decision to to brake, just like um, to brake if a car, you know, um, brakes in front of them. If a, if a car is like three, four meters in front of them, they will start braking. Um, however, um, they have their inherent safety and security challenges. So if a component of a uh, automated vehicle fails or is attacked, uh, the in-vehicle network is impacted and more. When I say more, because it's not only the in-vehicle network which can be impacted, it can be other vehicles. It can be the safety of other people on the roads. Um, 
the onboard computers may issue the wrong command and directly compromise traffic safety. And this is something we're going to get to later on in these slides. So um, as I said, like, you know, cars can take now decision, like the, um, the self-driven cars that can take decisions and um, auto brake or open an airbag or, um, or anything like that. So as an example, if you have a failed or tampered GPS, that data affects the localization of, of the vehicle and it leads to traffic disturbance or crash hazard. And you know how much we are dependent on these um, GPS systems these days. So when we are to trying to, um, before you do a threat model, you need to know what are uh, your threat actors, what are the attacking surface and stuff like that. So what are the attacking surfaces in a uh, automated self-driven car? Um, the secure interfaces, um, uh, these are all the interfaces in the car. Um, what they are lacking at the moment, um, I'm not going to go into the bad and good, but I'm just going to say it quickly. We need strong encryption on them um, and authentication to work correctly with trusted devices. So um, we need to have secure gateways, um, which we are kind of lacking as well, as well. I will get to this in later on, um, which can act as firewalls. We say this car can talk to that car uh, and this car can talk to... Um, to um, to a um, uh, sorry roadside unit, uh, which is connected to a um, trusted authority. Authentic, yeah. So we need to have secure networks to protect the communication over in vehicle against data manipulation like IPS and IDS. Um, and you know, uh, and these cars we are talking here, like when we say IPS, IDS, these cars, some of these cars are connected to the internet these days. Uh, secure processors and processed data. Um, you know, the processes and processed data are really attractive targets due to the amount of data processed through them. And the secure processor here, it's a long story. If you want to get to security on secure processes, we can go for hours. Um, we need as well to make sure that we have secure car access. It's like, you know, something like anti-theft immobilizers, uh, remote vehicle monitoring, smart car access, smart keys, etc. So just to show you, what, you know, what I meant in the beginning when I said it's a very, very big subject uh, to go and talk about, as, like to do a threat model or an autonomous system. There are too many interfaces, too many attack services. And um, to do a threat model, we need to be focused on, on something specific. Uh, but uh, if I go to uh, all the different um, units here, so you have the gateway control units engine uh, on the left. Uh, and uh, here, and you have the autonomous driving, um, which use the sentient data streams, you know, artificial intelligence and machine learning models. And we have the in-vehicle experience, you know, uh, which I was talking about, like um, uh, the OS, which has secure boot and HDCP. Uh, connectivity, uh, IPsec, you know, connectivity, external world. And when you talk, when you look at connectivity, you'll be shocked with what you see in some, in some, um, in some um, scenarios. I was looking at a, a um, I don't know, it's a data flow diagram. It's not a complete data flow diagram, but you can see like connection coming from a source, uh, which is really inexplicable to, uh, to connect straight to the car without going through any firewalls or anything like that. And the last bit, which I'm gonna, which I'll be talking about, which is the vanity security, which includes how cars talk to each other and how cars talk to routes, uh, roadside units, and how do they communicate with traffic lights, uh, traffic lights, and um, trusted authorities. So that's what I want to talk about. Uh, so the last bit here, uh, as I said, which is the vanity. Uh, which is a uh, vehicle ad, ad hoc network. It consists of a group or a group of moving or stationary vehicle connected by wireless network. So it uses wireless, um, um, wireless, wireless network. Until recently, the main use of Vanets was to provide safety and comfort to drivers in vehicle, vehicle environments. So all these cars, you know, moving down the road, as you see here, they connect to each other. So you can see that how far they, they are from each other. And then they will communicate to, to um, using the vehicle to infrastructure, to the roadside units, 
and the roadside units we have here, they will communicate to other roadside units and then feed to our trusted authority, which control the whole thing. Uh, I will talk about these specific stuff, specific uh, definitions uh, later on in the slides, uh, but I just want to, to, to show you what, what it does. So that's, that's the valid security. Uh, it is called, you know, network on wheels, which is, it is used as, as I said, to provide communication between the, vehic the vehicular nodes. Uh, vehicular nodes was, it was a, if, if they were a car or, a, um, or an RSU uh, or a uh, trusted authority. Um, so I just want to go through a couple of definitions here so you understand what I'm talking about later on. So an RSU is a roadside unit. It's a computing device which is fixed along, alongside the road. So they are available on all roads now um, or in specified locations such, such as parking area or, or, or at an intersection. They are, they are used to provide local connectivity to passing vehicle. So it is, it is are, you can call them like the medium between the cars. Uh, the vehicles and the trusted authority. Um, the trusted authority, which is responsible for managing the whole um, VANET system by registering all the RSUs, which are the roadside units I spoke about, and the cars, which you know they have OBUs. Uh, OBUs are GPS based tracking devices. Um, they ensure the security management of the VANET by very, very fine vehicle authentication, user ID, and OBU. An ID, um, uh, OBU ID, in order to avoid harm to any vehicle. But there's still the security here is still a bit shy. There, we don't have a lot of publications about uh, about all of these stuff and how they work exactly. Uh, well, we know how they work. But I mean about the security. Um, so I just wanted to um, before we before we get to that to the next uh, to the next. Um, couple of slides I just wanted to say so this is this this presentation is just an introduction to another one which is going to happen hopefully on the next open security summit where we will be talking um, in specific about uh, about you know we'll be we'll be doing a threat model on a specific components or on specific uh, communication um, as an example we can do that on the DSRC which is um, a direct short communication protocol which is used to which is used to uh, for communication between the cars and the uh, RSUs. Um, basically, it's 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 like a UDP thing. Uh, when we used to stream videos over UDP, well, we still do. Um, and UDP is fast. Uh, you don't do authentication. A lot of authentication. We don't. You don't do authentication with UDP. But I mean, if you want to talk about DSRC, is is exactly. It has um, similar. It, it is similar. It is very quick, very light. Not a lot of. Uh, it's not really authentication, not a um, a main thing on it. So I'm going to go to the next slide. I'm just going to talk a little bit about the Vanit security challenges. And um, um, in terms of, you know, we have the five pillars of information security and what would be the Vanit security challenges, uh, you know, in terms of availability, confidentiality, authentication, data integrity, and uh, non-reputation. Um, and um, in terms of availability for, Vanit, for the Vanit network, it, it is the most important part of the security service. It requires attention because it, directly it is directly associated with all the safety application. So um, if you wanna know uh, the, the status of, of, of the roads and you have a denial of service attack, um, how can you, <clears throat> Uh, it, it, will, it will be a big challenge for Vanit. So um, if you do a jamming attack, as an example, you know, where the attack, uh, attacker like disturbs the communication channel uh, by using like some heavily powered signal was equivalent frequency because we use <coughs> radio frequency. It is, it, is, it is very dangerous for the safety of the application. Um, then if we have a kind of malware attack, which is uh, which can uh, as well uh, threaten um, threaten the availability of the of the Vanet network. Um, that's another thing which can. <coughs> sorry. Uh, yeah. So um, another one where can be the broadcast and tampering attack, um, where you have untrustworthy vehicles um, which replicate the same message, so uh, or tampering with a message. Um, 
leading to other kind of attack like black hole attacks you know in terms of avail availability let me go back to here so and i'll i'll tell you i'll show you what i mean so yeah so i'm just going to go through this uh um just this photo which shows you how how it works how it is all connected so um if you have a spamming attack, that will as well. It is possible in 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 the vanit uh, vanit word, uh, spamming attack when you have an attacker sp sending numerous amount of messages, um, and which can cause collision, like you know uh, by utilizing more bandwidth as an example. Um, you have other kind of attacks, which like kind of gray hole attacks, black hole attacks. Um, it just went like, you know, we have untrustworthy vehicles, uh, select some of the data packets um, to forward and drop the other packs without being tracked. So um, a lot of things can happen here in terms of availability. Uh, if when I go to confidentiality, um, there are a couple of things which are possible on a vanit uh, and they are proven to be to be um, to be pass possible on a vanit network uh, in terms of confidentiality. So in something like eavesdropping which is very common in uh, the wireless communication technology as we all know um i know it is getting harder but i mean to remember uh, you know there is always someone who is um um more advanced uh, than others um i meant like um, i know it costs a lot of money probably to do such things and but i mean you always have like these terrorists being there in an area when they can do eavesdropping we can do you know um, uh, you know, probably do some man in the middle attacks um, <clears throat> where, you know, where they can alter messages and stuff like that, or other like social attacks to divert the attention of a driver, which is really, really uh, against like, why do we have a van? We have vanets and just to, for road safety and to make like, you know, your travel more comfortable. And, you know, social attack is a big confidentiality. Uh, thing which can uh, use uh, you know divert the you know attention of a driver and you know probably to get a reaction from the drivers after they receive uh, like you know an immoral message um, which will affect the driving experience and performance of the vehicle in the vanity system. Um, if when I talk about other stuff like authentication, um, authentication is is it's a very important part in the vanity system. It is used to protect against attacks uh, because of the malicious nodes entering the system. Um, you have a lot of lot of various kinds of attacks, uh, authentication attacks, such as a civil attack. Um, it is the most dangerous attack in which node contains uh, many fake identity to the, like can't disrupt the normal mode of operation of the vanit. Um, you know, you just broadcast multiple messages there. And then the attacker, you know, multi can manipulate other vehicles' behavior, and receive, and the receiving vehicle might think that, um, you know, might be might be. Uh, how do I translate this? So, um, it thinks that the messages are transmitted from different vehicles. Uh, you know, let's say um, the distance between vehicle A and the vehicle B is five meters. If it broadcasts that, it is ten meters. That can cause real real threat there and if we like other things of authentication there uh, which are like something like the tunneling attack uh, where um that this attack is similar to the warm a wormhole attack i spoke about earlier where the attacker uses the same network to initiate the private conversation and the attacker joined two far away parts of the van it's by utilizing like an extra communication channel named tunnel um that's why like the nodes um which are very far can communicate which which sorry which leads to, like the nodes which are very far to communicate as, as they were neighbors as i just explained let's say two cars next to each other they are five meters away from each other and um, you just go and trick um the two adjacent cars and say um, and get information from another car uh gps spoofing i mean uh, this is uh, something um uh, which is very very possible um it's just like about spoofing the position uh, and location of of a node which is very very important for road safety and uh, to make your travel easier 
Um, so, um, you know, there is a log file which is maintained, which contains location table in the GPS uh, satellite. This can be tampered or can be spoofed. Um, so the, atta the attacker here can use a trick to create full GPS location information and does not reveal like the correct position uh, to dodge the vehicles that might, may think that it is available in some other location. Um, another one is node impersonation attack, uh, which is, um, which is, you know, uh, it takes place where uh, by successfully acquiring the valid ID of a user and sending it to another authorized user. A uh, free riding attack is something I just read about over the weekend. And um, uh, it's an attack which is very common and, in, <coughs> and it is initiated by a, Mac, by a user, by a malicious user, by making false like, authentication efforts uh, while associated with a cooperative message authentication. Um, so the malicious user take advantage of other user authentication Let's say I steal your Uber session and I take your ride. Um, replay attack, um, which is very common. Uh, it's a very common attack, which also known as a playback attack. Uh, it's, it's an attack which occurs when a valid data um, is fraudulently transmitted or causes delay to produce unauthorized and malicious effect. Um, in order to tackle this attack, the vanit must require enough time sources with larger cache memory, so um, which are used to compare the received messages. Another kind of attack, uh, which is the message tampering, um, I think we, um, I think this is very clear, and it is common, um, in which the attacker can alter the, me the exchange messages in between ve vehicle to vehicle and vehicle to infrastructure. Um, which you know, kind of counterf um, counterfeit responses. Um, other attacks which are on um, data integrity in Vanets, like the replay attack, which we just explained um, earlier. Uh, so the attacker aims to repeat or delay the transmission um, uh, transmission fraudulently by having a valid data and inject beacon messages which received before on. Um, on the van it continuously, which will cause definitely difficulty for traffic authority to identify the vehicles in case of an emergency. Or uh, you can, what you can do here is um, there is one th key thing with the van it. Let's say if you are an ambulance, it will automatically detect you as an ambulance. It will send a message to to other other cars uh, saying there is an ambulance coming, so make way. They will make way. They will make way. So imagine like, you know, the message tampering here and um, impersonation, you just like impersonate an ambulance and you are a bank robber, uh, what's gonna happen? Uh, another thing in, on, in terms of integrity is a lesion attack. Um, this attack received data from antennas and collected malicious data from sensors which generate traffic warning messages, um, but like by using the existing road condition which may create illusion to the vehicles nearby. Um, so the elision attack may be caused by vehicle accidents and traffic congestions and also minimize the performance of the vanity system, uh, which means like utilizing that bandwidth. Um, and the last thing is to talk about is on attack on uh, non-reputation. So the reputation attack, it occurs when an attacker denies engaging in the activity of sending and receiving messages in case of any dispute. I mean, this is might be like a rare one, um, but these are like, you know, the most common attacks, like, you know, if you want to show, you know, which affects the five pillars of an information security system uh, in terms of availability, confidentiality, authentication, data integrity, and uh, non-reputation. Um, well, I listed all the attacks here, but I didn't want to, uh, and I went through them. So this is everything we spoke about. Um, Last thing is the good, bad news, and why, oh, sorry. How did I hide this? Uh, sorry, it just uh, hide in my. The good and bad news, and why do we need Vanit security? Uh, the good thing, I mean, I was doing a lot of digging over the last couple of weeks, and there are tons of researches uh, going on the subject. I wanna say that over the last two years, we didn't have, 
we didn't have it because affected by the pandemic we didn't have much as much as uh, published probably uh, on the internet uh, as much as we had before but i mean i can see there are a lot of tons of research one of them was done by trend micro it's a quite interesting one so um improving van security will definitely improve the road safety and traffic flow in many ways so if you are you have a secure vanit network uh, which it means like you know when you are on the road in that car um it you, you'll be safe so um so you're not gonna have you know imagine imagine a self-driven car which can be controlled by a terrorist who's not on the motorway he's just within the range um and we are imagining here just a i'm not talking a um iot device iot uh, vehicle system i'm just talking about um a a, a just a self-driven car which is not connected to the internet just connected to uh, obus and rsus and uh, sorry which it has an obu connected to our uh, to an rsu um so imagine someone is just by the side of the road they can go and control cars control the traffic issue commands to break like car doing 70 miles on a motorway and making them issue a command to break immediately what kind of chaos can we do there? And you know that's a big security threat, where probably you can't see the attacker. It's going to be really hard to to see the attacker. And one other thing is, which I saw, um, uh, I was when I was digging uh, last week, I saw that they're going to start introducing this, like kind of a black box on on um, on Vanit, uh, on uh, sorry, on 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 autonomous vehicles. Um, uh, it's similar to the one we have in airplanes um, because it's really, really one of the cons, one of the things that is really annoying is to be able to trace what happened. So when you have people driving the cars, I mean, to, uh, it is different, but you when you have vehicles, you know, you need locks and you need uh, these locks to be safe, like encrypted. Uh, you need to make sure that are accessible. You need to make sure that if there is a security attack, cyber threat, so uh, they are not tampered with. Um, yeah, so that's why like improving vanity security will improve definitely improve safe, um, road safety. Um, and um, when I say hey, machine errors are are significant significant compared to human errors. Um, um, you know, machine errors are programs one, two, three, four, five. And they use machine learning and other stuff, which is an uh, AI, which is really important. But you know, human are affected by emotions. Human are affected by too many things. Uh, machines are not uh, affected by by uh, emotions. Uh, machines are not going to get drunk and jump on a road. Um, um, and machines are not going to have a heart attack while driving and causing uh, another incident. Um, car manufacturers at the moment, one of the bad things i'm not going to say bad but i just like for some reason they are hiding um hiding a lot of these data so i'm not publishing enough about um, their av security and i don't think we are doing enough we should do more if you are expecting like by in the next 10 years to have more self-driven cars or the fuser to use them more we need more data and which is very important in the security world as you know um when i started that project um in my with my previous employer, it was really hard in the beginning, like to detect stuff. We didn't have much data, so on this on 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 this subject as well, we need more data. We need more data so we can simulate uh, simulate attacks, uh, do attack simulations. Um, and and the other thing is that some some car funny manufacturers, I'm gonna say, I'm not gonna say all of them. They over um, they see uh, AV security as an overhead or if they don't see it an overhead they it is you know they give it to a third party which cannot deal with it they don't deal with it internally but and you know going back to the positive stuff car insurance is gonna drop um uh it's gonna definitely go down in the future because accidents will decrease i don't know we might have another kind of car insurance um vanit system they you know as we know if we maintain them maintain their security as well they are helping us improving the flow of traffic and as I explained at the beginning, that uh, in the UK, you and now I think if you are doing 37 miles per hour or less, you can uh, you can read the news, you can watch a video, you don't you don't need to do anything. Um, I don't know if this if this uh, law is in action or it is going to be in action soon, but I I I'm definitely heard about it 
um, two week, three weeks ago on the radio. Um, okay, so we need a lot of data to reduce traffic. Uh, we need wide adoption. Already, already uh, explained this. Well, one of the other things, we might have less jobs in the transportation uh, industry when we have self-driven cars. I mean, but look at it from another um, from another perspective. It will be an opportunity for other people to have new jobs. Uh, it's like uh, when we talk about journalism years ago. You know, if you need to be a journalist, you need to go and, um, and so if you have a newspaper, it's like paperwork. Uh, they deliver to your door and stuff like that. When we start having website, these businesses which didn't change from a paper to digital, they, they suffered. But I mean, it opened opportunities for other people, for more reporters, for to get you know the digital uh, digitalizing the word opened opportunities for other people. Which is really uh, well, the other thing, which uh, you know maintaining um, the vanity security uh, will will help us on having less traffic. Um, decisions are not made um, as an example, um, you know, by, by we don't have emotional decisions. Someone get pissed off, he goes on the left, on the left lane, blocks everyone uh, from um, doing their, um, um, you know, continuing their journey. Um, so, and the other thing is no human error. Uh, well, um, no drunk driving and no medical cause incident, uh, accidents. Bar incidents, uh, yeah. So uh, that's another that's another thing. Um, we need to know as well that the cyber threat is high, as I explained before. And um, um, I I was talking to a friend over the weekend who works for one of the big car manufacturers, but he said to not mention his name or his uh, employer. And um, uh, he he explained to me, um, sorry. Yeah. So. Um, Sorry, I just lost the. Okay. Um, okay. So on the cyber threats, um, we're talking. It is. It is. Uh, it is high. Um, uh, I will talk about my friend uh, later on. So um, it is one of the bad things. It is very difficult to determine who caused an, an accident. Uh, probably we need a black box, as I said uh, earlier. And uh, what I discovered that. Uh, this is something um, other companies are developing. Uh, whether the black box is going to be some, like saving uh, something to the cloud, which I don't think is going to be good. Uh, it should be like somewhere, you know, in the car, uh, unbreakable, even if there is a fire or whatever, similar to the ones you know, we use in, in airplanes. And the other thing is... Um, the vanit systems can be dangerous in severe weather conditions, or if we treat like you know feed them information that the weather is is not good. Um, and the reason is they can't see, right? So they can't see. Uh, so um, a human being can see uh, can see can see a a um, like a tree falling you know on the road uh, from far away, and he can stop or change route. Um, that's not possible with cars at the moment. Uh, integrity attacks can be severe, as an example, like, you know, some vehicles pretending to be an ambulance, as I explained before. Um, this is a scenario where you, you, you know, um, a vanity system can facilitate a robbery. Um, or it can be disrupted by a denial of service attack and physical obstacles. So if you are going under a bridge, you might have no radio frequency there, so you can't connect. Um, I think now uh, for the future, so um, we are planning to do a, um, uh, myself and my, my, uh, my friend Andre uh, Ferreira, um, some of you know, uh, know him, so we are planning to do a threat model on the SRC, which is a protocol used by um, vehicles uh, to, uh, to exchange information, uh, which is um, direct short communication um, uh, protocol. Uh, so. But I mean, we need, we're gonna need, you know, to have thousands of threat models uh, per uh, autonomous vehicle to be able to reduce the threats. We don't have much data. We lack the data. And hopefully on the next time we'll be able to deliver you a, a proper threat model. Uh, I apologize about not delivering it today, but it was, it was really, really tough to get information. Um, 
and because of the the subject is very 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 big uh, so hopefully next time we'll be able to deliver that so on the next security summit any questions Uh, I don't know if people can ask questions. Katie, can can people ask questions? Yeah, um, feel free to put your questions in the chat if you have any, um, okay. or if you pop your hand up, um, and I should try and get you unmuted. It didn't let me do it last time. So what okay, I I I I so I I can see now. A, yeah, yeah, I can see Dennis saying that he can't connect to the. <laughs> yeah, and now I can see um, a question from Prakash. As cyber criminals may see driverless automobiles as a profitable target because they might store an enormous amount of customer data, how to safeguard uh, this stuff? So uh, basically, here's one of the very basic things we can do is uh, encryption, uh, like encrypt the data at rest and in transit, uh, which is uh, why we want to go and discuss like um, the um, the SRC next time um, uh, and do the threat model on the SRC and how how the communication is actually happening. Um, so this is this is one of the key things we can do and we can work a little bit more on the authentication. Okay, so uh, Prakash again. So in case of cyber attacks on AV, is there a black box that we can investigate? No. Um, well, um, no, there is no. Um, there is no black box at the moment. Some some vehicles, which are IoT stuff, they can save logs. But uh, there are a lot of ideas uh, about about having a black box, which is similar to uh, the ones we have on airplanes. And encryption will make um, make the processing slow, isn't it? Yeah, it might do. But you know, uh, things are improving. Pro probably we can work a little bit on improving the wireless uh, communication, um, and. Um, Encryption is always worth it. Um, and um, I use public key infrastructure, by the way. So um, yeah, sorry, Petra. Yeah, sorry, I was didn't want to interrupt you. Um, if you want to finish your thought. No, I'm, I'm already, already I'm, I'm, I'm done. Okay, cool. Hi. Um, Hi. So thank you for this presentation. This is a fascinating topic. Um, and what kind of scares me the most is there's so many moving parts and the attack surface is just huge. And the biggest problem is it's not just inside the vehicle, it's like everywhere around it, like physical the world, physically, this attack surface. So, I mean, to be fair, that's kind of like what the cloud is, uh, you know, sometimes it can be dispersed, but um, I'm trying to say is like, based on your studies that you've done on this um, and this huge attack surface, do you, how secure can we actually get with these vehicles? Like, in your personal opinion, what do you think, should this ever go live? <laughs> Petra, I would just tell you one thing. So before I was, when I saw Jeremy Clarkson driving that, uh, it was a Tesla, I think. Um, no, not a Tesla. Yeah, I, I think it was a Tesla, yeah, self-driven car. And he went on the motor, I was like, this is really cool. <laughs> And over the last two weeks, I mean, after I've done some more digging, to be to be very honest, like myself, I'm I'm very reluctant on going in in one of these cars. But I mean, the only problem is we need we need more data. The, the only thing we need more data. We don't have enough data, and we don't have enough people publishing about this um, about this subject. To be honest, let me stop sharing. So we don't have enough people publishing about this subject, which is which is more scary. And when I showed you that previous photo, you have one, two, three, four, five main things for you know. I'm not going to say attack, yeah, not attack surface. It is it is even higher than that. It's just like under these ones, you have a hundred of components, thousands of components which can be uh, which can be attacked. So you can you can attack the operating system on the on the on the on the on the on the car and probably start sending like you know a fake engine stuff to the driver distract him or probably ask him to ask the car to brake yeah so give it give it a command to brake imagine 70 miles per hour on the m25 yeah all all brake all brake now what's gonna happen um and 
I think one one big element is the AI and ML uh, stuff that can help a lot. And I know you like that subject. So yeah. the but it can also not be helpful. They can. Um, it's been proven how they can trick uh, AI. Like they can change lights to seem um, to seem one color to the human eye, but trick. You know, they put some kind of little images inside and things like that that trick AI to think, oh, this is green light or whatever, uh, or you know, oh, this is a kid or this is not. A, you know, like I've I've seen how like. I see an article where AI can also be tampered with. Yeah, Petra, I can I can give you another example. So uh, you know the, the cars, the OBU in a car, uh, it it uses uh, you know it connects to uh, using the V to I, so um, vehicle to infrastructure. So it it connects to traffic lights, yeah, and it will get information from a traffic light about the traffic. Probably what's the color of the of the of the light at, the, at this time? Is it it's a green? So go. So imagine like you can break into that and just say, yeah, it is, it is, it is green, just go. So uh, it, it can be fatal to be honest, but there are a lot of work, there are a lot of work which, which is being done. I found, I found something from 2012, which is really good. That, mean, that means like eight years. I couldn't find earlier stuff. I mean, that 2012, I found a lot of stuff from um, Toyota, I think. Um, so they did, they, they started, doing, but they're all using that protocol, which is really making me, um, the DSRC, which is making me like really like scared. They did a lot of improvement, but I mean, we still need more data, so. Yeah, yeah, scared stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Albert. Any more questions? Okay. Last call for any questions. Obviously, if you think of any after, feel free to reach out on Slack and we'll get those Please. answered for you. Uh, thanks everyone for joining us. Thank you. Thanks everyone. Cheers. Cheers, bye.